What's up? What's up? I'm sniffing away today because of the amount of air pollution. Um, everything's on fire around here. Um, but that's not why you're here. You're here because I'm going to tell you how to get the bearings out of the crankcase on your CBR CRF. And uh, before I did it, I had a bit of a brain fart and completely forgot how I did it two years ago. So I went and I watched a video that I made two years ago. And that showed me what I needed to get these bearings out. So, oops. Sometimes the rubbish I do put on the internet is useful. Anyway, I've waffled. What we're going to need is some threaded bar. A delve into your box of uh, odds and sods full of washers and bits of tube and God knows what else. And then you're going to need something that is exactly the same diameter as those bearings there, which is not going to damage that case because they've got to be drawn through that way. There's a lip on this side of the case which will stop them coming this way. Now that's my inserting tool. That's not going to work for what I want. So that's why I went and looked at my old video because with my old age pensioner's brain I'd forgotten what I'd done last time. Well this is what I did. I searched through just about everything I had to try and find something the right diameter and uh, I came up with not that one not that one I do believe I came up with that one but we're about to find out anyway so oh and the giant one so let's just uh, throw this down on air and to save time I'm going to fiddle about and then show you what I've fiddled with so this is half of a dimple die, but basically what you're trying to do is get something that will sit on this side of the casing so that you can draw the bearing into it. And as it so happens, better look for the camera, see what I'm filming, aren't I? Even if no one does watch it. Right, so as you can see, that one goes nicely on the inside of there. And on this side, Well, I found a dimple die that works. Uh, it's got a couple of little chunks out of it though, so I'll just put it in my lathe a minute. And we'll just sort that out so he's a nice fit in there. Um, I'll tell you what the other thing I could do is, because you're going to say, what size is that, mister? So I'm going to say... Hold it the right way round, shall we? None of you are standing upside down. 35.96. So 36 mil is kind of what we want. Right, I'll just get this nice because it's a very tight fit. So recap time. I've got half a big dimple die, half a smaller dimple die, the important size being 36 millimeter OD. A um, bit of threaded bar, some washers and these nuts. Right, let's assemble it up. I seem to have an odd bit of threaded bar here because only one of the nuts will actually thread on the bar. So this has all got to be done the slow way. I'll save you that. Oh, it's a good job I did just pause it because uh, I had to change all the tools around. Wasn't quite how I wanted it. Right, basically, make sure your receiver is sat square and he's not on the gimp. If it's on the gimp, you're going to pull the bearings at an angle and you're going to do damage. Likewise, this. Um, I've put a larger nut in there just to space it out a bit, but that's a little bit naughty. I shouldn't really be doing that because it's allowing it to go on the gimp a little bit. So, what I will do is um, pause you again and rejig that. Right, so, get all your jig ready, and then centralise it. Make sure it's all nice and central. Don't have anything. Try to make sure the washers are the same diameter as the bar, and that's a wheel spacer there, which is a bit bigger, but it's kind of central. Make sure it's all central, like I just said twice. Make sure the back is still... Ooh. Make sure the back is not slipped onto the neck. 
around the casing, which mine just did. That's why I checked it. Right, and start winding it up. You should hear a bang. <coughs> Not that kind of bang bang. You should hear, all right, you should hear a ping as the bearing starts to move. Right, bearing. There is a slightly, that's a very, very tight fit there. Very tight. I'm just watching it carefully. My well, bearings are slowly popping out. Now, you go on to the interweb and you find a workshop manual. And that will give you all the specifications for the colours of the bearing shells, etc, etc. Right. But I'll uh, explain that lot again later on. Okay, here we go. And your nuts back off. And then, around the outside, put you back there again, and well, I'm changing them now. One pair of Honda bearing shells removed. Now you probably can't see it in this light, there's nowhere good to shoot here, but uh, there's a nice scuff on there and I've got copper showing on the other ones. So, new cranks going in, I'm not using them again. How to select your bearings. Every engine casing has an ID marker, A, B or C. If it doesn't have a marker, you're on your own mate. But anyway, I've had a B and I've had a C. So, you've got your engine marker there, and this is where it gets funny, because, let me prop that bearing in there, and that's not going to work. Um, put that bearing there so I can get down to it. Right, can you see, where's my finger? There it is. Can you see that little mark, paint mark, at the top of the shell there? Yeah? No, exactly. They wear off. But anyway, that is supposed to be a coloured paint mark telling you which bearing shell goes with that casing there's a chart on the Honda instruction manual which will make things not clear whatsoever but I suggest uh, sitting there with a couple of beers trying to work it out so anyway what we're saying here is I have got a B casing with black bearing shells now, if you've got a second-hand crank or whatever, you do have to do the proper crank shaft uh, measurements just to make sure that your crank's not worn. And you can get slightly bigger shells to fit back in there. So that's pretty much that. I don't think you really want to see the other half, do you? Um, but what I will do is I will drop the link below the description. I don't know if anyone ever reads my descriptions, but all my descriptions describe what I'm actually doing. But I'll put the link to my other channel, which has got the full engine rebuild. And then you've got a choice of two videos that you can say, You don't know what he's doing. Right. Let's go and get a beer later.